Alright, if we're going to attempt to make the cheapest speaker possible, we're going to have to break down the technology into its most basic bass thumping pieces. The first loudspeaker was created by Johann Philip Rice in the 1860s. Using the human ear as inspiration, he took a sausage skin, a hollowed out cork, and a violin string to make the very first loudspeaker, mimicking how the eardrum takes vibrations from sound waves and converts them into audible tones. So shouldn't that mean that the eardrum can take any vibrations and convert them into audible tones? Yes, in fact, as Beethoven hmm. started losing his hearing later in life, he would bite down on a conductor's wand and press it against the piano so that he could hear the tones through the vibration. This is the same technology used in bone conducting headphones. To see how this works for yourself, you can make your own bone conducting speaker with an old set of headphones and a small DC motor. Cut off one earphone and strip the wire to expose the two smaller wires within it. Burn off the plastic coating covering them and then connect them to the leads of the motor. When you plug it into the headphone jack and start playing music, the motor should start vibrating. Then if you hold that motor to the bone behind your ear, the vibration should turn into audible music. But that's not an actual speaker. To make one of those, we have to jump back to the hmm. 1820s before Johann Rice's hey. speaker to meet Hans Christian Ørsted, who discovered electromagnetism. He found that passing a current through a wire created a magnetic field around that wire, and that reversing the current reversed the polarity of the magnetic field. So combining electromagnetism with loudspeakers, Ernst Simons in the 1870s created the first electromagnetic speaker, which is the footprint of loudspeakers that we use today. It was a coil that could move axially and placed inside a magnetic field. When a current was applied to the coil, it would move in one direction. And then when the current was switched, the polarity would reverse and send it in the other direction, creating a vibration. Then some sort of diaphragm was attached to convert those vibrations to sound waves. These are the bare essentials that you need to make a working speaker. So let's simplify the parts. For the wire, we can just use a paper clip, then a business card for the diaphragm, and you can grab a magnet from the fridge. The stronger, the better. And then we can just use the same headphones that we used in the bone conducting example. Take the paper clip and bend the ends outwards to act as terminal connectors. Then using alligator clips, solder, or any other method you deem fit, connect the headphone wires to the paper clip. Now fold your business card like so to make a triangle and hold it together with the paper clip. Now attach the magnet to the paper clip, plug it into the headphone jack, and start some music. Holding the business card to your ear, you'll be able to hear the music playing. I know it's not the prettiest thing ever, but it not only shows you the technology behind how speakers work, it also makes a pretty cool party trick. If you got any value from this video and would like to give some value back, please consider donating to my Patreon page at patreon.com tinkernut. And if you're not able to donate anything at this time, also please consider subscribing, liking, or commenting. Stay up to date on the cool projects I'm doing by following me on Twitter or Google+. And for more cool videos, go to tinkernut.com, where technology and creativity collide.